Hello everyone, it's Rebecca with a Bible Art Journaling Challenge. I'm going to show you how to use distressing for some blending techniques and some nice Prismacolor colored pencils in the margin of your Bible. I am in Hebrews today and firstly I need to cut out some letters. So I'm using this fun die cut machine it is the big shot and I'm using some sticky labels here so essentially creating my own stickers and so I've cut them into the shape that I need and I'm using the back side facing me so that I get the correct sticky side in the right order so I it will stick without the letters being backwards and then I'm just laying them over the individual letters that I need. That way I don't waste sheets upon sheets of laying them on there. And then just the famous sandwich where you put a plate on the back and the front. And because this is a big die, it's thick and you m remove the platform from your big shot machine like that. And then you just crank it through and it goes perfectly through. It's great. So now I have a bunch of letters cut out for me and I am ready to go. I really enjoy my big shot machine and I think die cutting is something that I'm always looking for ways to use in Bible art journaling and today was a good example of doing that. Uh, you're going to see a couple of thoughts here. I took these stickers and put them on my Bible and you could just do what I did and put them straight in and you could leave them there but they're very hard to get off unless you rub your fingers along the bottom of the stickers when you peel them off to essentially try and remove some of the sticky. And I knew that, but I just wasn't thinking. So I put them down without taking the effort to make them less tacky. And so they came up with a little bit of difficulty. So I would imagine that the best thing for you to do if you wanna follow along with what I'm doing in this way is to either decide to leave your stickers in place when you're finished, or you can simply remove some of the tack so that they peel up easier first by rubbing your finger along the back side of the sticker once you peel the backing off of it before you place it down. So I used a little ruler here to just put everything in place. And I tend to do the outside letters and then work my way from the middle so that I kind of space everything properly. And then once I got this in place, I did some distress ink blending and you've seen me do this before in the very first week of the challenge and I will link to that below the video so you can have a look at it. It's a really fun technique in our Bibles, I think personally, I just really haven't found a good way to get good distress ink blending unless it's directly on the paper, which means that sometimes it'll bleed through a little bit. but. What you've seen me do there is I'm getting a bit of color and then I tap it off onto another sheet of color and then I start this process on my pink sheets of paper. If I go stra straight with my ink directly onto the Bible paper, I tend to really get it soaking up that ink and it just bleeds straight through. But by tapping off a bit of the color and starting somewhere else, I'm basically rubbing most of the ink off and I have a limited amount left to go onto the Bible paper. And it's still very vibrant and works well. But you can see on the left there where that kind of pinky red color, one lipstick just turned very deep colored on that edge there and it's because I started on the edge of the paper and it will always soak up more on that edge. So if you start where you've got your masking paper, which is my pink post-it notes there, and work your way over from there, you'll find that it works really well. I think this works really well when you have something that you're masking like this because those stickers are keeping you from pushing too hard on the actual surface of your paper. But Distress Ink is a water-based ink, so it really doesn't like to stick to things like gesso and stuff like that. It works great if you're using it as a watercolor, but it just doesn't seem to like to blend on naturally. So. I'm okay with it bleeding through a bit like that. If I use a really light hand, it will try and stay on the top. And I made the mistake of literally giving it three seconds of heat. I knew better than that, don't use your heat gun. Just let it dry naturally, because if you do use your heat gun, you'll have some problems with getting those stickers off if you do that. So anyways, I'm just gonna use my Micron and give the 
edges some color and then peel that off and do some colored pencil on my lettering. And you find that if you do peel your stickers off, they may leave a little bit of a tack of sticky on the paper, but going over it with colored pencil will completely cover over any of that stickiness and you'll end up with a really fun page. I'm really happy with how mine turned out. So I'm just gonna let you watch this process. I will link over on my blog to some different techniques where I've taught you a lot of these different things and so you can go and check those out. And I wanna to talk to you about the scripture. So today we are in Hebrews chapter four, verse 10 and 11. And the verses are really in line with last week where we talked in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, where it said, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Well, now this week we're in Hebrews 4, 10 and 11, and it says, for whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. So I just possibly can cover this slightly in this video, but as usual, I always go into more depth on my blog about the devotional that matches the challenge. And I'd encourage you to look at that if you wanna look in depth with this. But interestingly, this section of scripture, if you go a little bit broader, as I always say, read the context. If you look at Hebrews chapter three, verse seven, all the way through Hebrews four, verse 13, you'll find that it actually references the same instance that we talked about a couple of weeks ago in Exodus, where the people complained, they didn't worship God, and he caused them not to enter into the promised land. It said that he didn't allow them to enter into rest. And the promised land was that place of rest for them. And because they didn't worship him in obedience and they complained and didn't believe that he would do the miracles that he'd done in the past, then they really didn't enter into his rest. And here again, we see that we're, we're given a promise of rest, but our job is to make sure that we take time to rest and look after ourselves, just as God did in the seventh day of creation. He looked after himself and he rested after he'd worked. And we don't have to be religious about this, but we do need rest just like God does. If God needs rest, so do we. And he modeled it to us. And so it's important that we take the time to properly look after ourselves so that we are in a place of refreshment and we can offer the world the best of ourselves instead of giving everyone a half-masked version of ourselves because we're so worn out. And this is something that is a dear topic to my heart. I spent a couple of years resting because I had been bedridden from health issues and I learned a lot about rest in that season and it is so important that we take the time to do that and you know it really isn't just about doing nothing it's about being refreshed and we can do that by being in God's presence, spending time with him. I think Bible art journaling is an excellent way to rest in God's presence. We can just take time with him, take time to refresh ourselves, get into his presence and and learn more of who he is in our lives, who we are in his, and really to play hard and work hard. Both of those things help us to rest well and when we have worked hard, then we are promised rest if we will get into that place of believing God for the things that he has done in the past, thanking him for those things, being in a place where we know of his goodness because we ponder those things in our heart and we position our hearts for God to break through and do things wonderfully in our lives as he always loves to do. And so I will reference a few of those things over on my blog and talk about them and I'd love you to come and join me. This is pretty simple here. You can see that I'm just writing some text and then filling it in with some colored pencil, a few different colors and blending them together. And then I'm going in with a colorless blender to kind of blend it all together. And I just wanted to remind myself to enter God's rest. And it actually says in one section here, 
that it says in Hebrews 3, verse 15, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. And the rebellion was that time for the Israelites where they'd seen God do amazing things, and yet they still hardened their hearts and didn't believe that he would do it again. And they caused themselves to not enter a place of rest as a result of that. And that was their day of testing. That was the time where God said, I have an opportunity for you to trust that I can do these miracles for you. And they just simply didn't keep themselves soft to the promises of God in their life. And I really want to be somebody who always takes the time to be mindful of the goodness of God and the things that he's done and keep them fresh on my mind so I remember what he's done so that I'm able to easily come into a place of rest because my heart is at peace with the goodness of God and I'm not afraid that nothing's going to happen the way it needs to happen. Everything is going to fall into place because God looks after his kids and we've got those kinds of assurances when we follow his word. And I think that's one reason why it's so important that we know his word is so that we know what we need to do so that we can have the promises of God. And so what a great way for us to do that is to spend time Bible art journaling and spending time in the word really immersing ourselves in it and grasping what he's trying to say to us. So I encourage you to come along on that journey if you haven't yet. Get yourself a Bible or an art journal that you can follow along with this challenge and just find verses that really speak to you and minister to you and go for it. Spend time in his presence with me. I'd love to have you join me if you haven't already. And if you have, thanks so much for doing this with me. This has been so much fun. I can't believe we've been, I've been at this for 34 weeks now and it's just amazing all that God's doing. And I hope that you will continue to come on the journey with me and spend time really being refreshed in God's presence and speaking to him about the things that you want to see growing in your life and taking time to ponder his presence in your life. Jesus is the ultimate king to serve because we can trust that he has our back and if we will be soft towards the things that he wants to do, the goodness that he wants to bring into our life and remember his goodness in our life so that we don't come into a state of unbelief, then he provides us with the peace of his rest and when we hear his voice and we go through testing that's the time to trust his word and trust him at what he said and believe that he can really minister to us and so I encourage you today spend some time in the presence of God and create in this challenge with me and spend some time pondering how to trust him with all that he says that he is capable of doing in our life and come on this journey with me so I hope that you will come and do the challenge it's your turn and I hope that you will take some time to come and join me on my blog I always like seeing you over there and I just want to point this out if you haven't seen this yet go over to my blog and on the header it says bible art in the top navigation and you'll see that archive there on the left of all of the challenges so you can click through and see all the tutorials and on the right you can see my patron account i'd love you to come and see what this art ministry is about and what i'm doing and see if you'd like to join me to impact lives love you guys and i will see you next week